asking? This presser is about asking the government to spare Kenyans more agony, to tell the government that it must do more, to cushion Kenyans against the impact of COVID-19. It's about the missed opportunities and misguided efforts. We begin this press conference with a sober acknowledgement of the many who have died from COVID-19 complications. During this current wave of COVID-19 infections, many of us have either lost loved ones or know of someone who has. Further, the dire experience many have had in hospitals seeking beds for their loved ones has been extremely difficult and emotionally exhausting. Our prayers are with those who have lost their loved ones as we continue to navigate this very challenging period whose severity could have been mitigated by better planning and preparedness by our government. We are compelled to issue this statement in response to the recent lockdown measures announced by the President last Friday. Among other measures, the President announced cessation of movement in five counties, Nairobi, Kiambu, Machakos, Kajiado, Nakuru. These five counties are the gateway to all the other counties of Kenya. So in effect, this cessation of movement in five counties is in effect a lockdown of the entire country. The first lockdown that was initiated almost a year ago to date resulted in economic shockwaves that reverberated countrywide and continue to have an impact to this present day. Although several stimulus interventions were put in place to cushion Kenyans at that time, the impact of the pandemic resulted in massive job losses, disruption of schooling, strained healthcare provision, and more challenges were experienced and are still being experienced. It was as though the country's heart had stopped beating. The relaxation of the lockdown four months later was therefore a welcome relief coming at a time many businesses had greatly suffered losses, forcing them to either scale down or close down altogether. As Kenyans were suffering, COVID millionaires and billionaires were being minted. These continued to walk scot-free, enjoying their ill-gotten wealth, while Kenyans continue to be ravaged by COVID-19 and, and are ill-served by an equally ill-prepared health system that is unable to respond to the critically ill and unable to provide adequate vac vaccines for the eligible. The second lockdown is providing more opportunities for continued looting unless drastic action is taken now. It is against this background that Kenyans have reacted with shock to the second lockdown, which comes at a time when businesses were beginning to recover, some more successfully than others, some were struggling and are still struggling, and some were unable to resume operations. Sadly, the mere announcement of a lockdown results in automatic job losses. 
for many in the sectors that are either directly or indirectly affected. The cost of living continues to rise, exacerbated by unjustifiable rises in fuel prices. Parts of the country are facing a looming food crisis. There is desperate lack of access to health care for many against a backdrop of overwhelmed and overworked and underprotected health care workforce. We are greatly aggrieved that the Jubilee administration did not outline any measures to address these hardships as they announced the lockdown. A lockdown is not an end in itself. It is supposed to slow community transmission while giving the country adequate time to prepare uh, to respond to the pandemic. This is actually what the first lockdown should have done for us. This is what it should have achieved, but did not achieve because nothing was done. Without plans and funding to procure adequate vaccines and improve our health services in all the 47 counties, the lockdown is but a haphazard measure that will only create more suffering to the vulnerable without any tangible benefit. Kenyans will recall that a majority of citizens zealously observed the COVID-19 protocols and that it is the top political class who led their supporters into mass rallies for BBI and for the just concluded by elections and who broke all the known COVID protocols. It is sad that it is Kenyans, the ordinary citizens, who are now facing the hardships brought about by the lockdown. I would say the bearing the burden of this brutal economic realities. We are telling the government that it must do the following in order to cushion Kenyans against the impact of the response to the new wave of COVID-19. The president and his cabinet must do the following. One, immediately take up the cost of testing and treatment of COVID-19 in all government facilities countrywide. Two, intensify testing and vaccination in the areas designated as disease infected zones. That is the five counties to ensure a return to normalcy at the earliest opportunity. But we also insist that the vaccine should be available countrywide to the eligible. The government must urgently procure adequate vaccines to cover all those in need and eligible for the vaccines. The government must take immediate steps to enhance capacity in all county hospitals for testing and response to the critically ill, including the management of the daily health needs of Kenyans. The government must immediately provide food sub subsidies and, expanded and expand cash transfers to the vulnerable. The government must fast track investigations and prosecutions in the COVID-19 related corruption as a way of building trust in the response process. That's the only way we can know that this is not yet another opportunity to create another band of COVID millionaires and billionaires. Finally, the government must institute taxation measures to cushion the citizens and businesses from the adverse economic effects of the lockdown. The government must also consult with businesses and with Kenyans on the way forward in order to bridge the gap between policy pronouncements and the needs of Kenyans. We thank you.
And let's see if there are questions. That's all we had for today. Would you like to manage them? Yeah. <coughs> so we'll take a few questions. Um, so we'll start on this side. I don't see any women. Usually we prefer to start with the women uh, reporters. So we'll start from this side. Anybody with a question? Please speak it clearly and say your station. Any questions? My name is Kennedy Murray from NTV, mm. and uh, listening to your speech, listening to your speech, and uh, also on what the president has been able to do, you stated categorically that most of these things have been done haphazardly. Yeah. Does it basically mean that the president is losing grip on what he's doing, or even the people who are advising him are misadvising him on the effects on how or and on how to move on with regards to containing? the coronavirus and also in the question of one of the proposals you've made is on uh